Hi there, it's Shauna Bernardin, and I'd like to welcome you back to our next episode of GGTV. Thank you guys. We are almost at a thousand, and it's been five weeks of actually videotaping and four weeks of posting today. This is an amazing thing. I can't thank you guys enough. To take a little minute today because this is our one month anniversary and let you guys know a little bit about us. First of all, I've had so much response from you guys, it's amazing. I really, my heart is full with all the people that have really been helping us and encouraging us. Uh, one thing is, is a lot of you guys think that we have like a publication and this is a 100% family run business. My daughter and my son and myself are the production team. So let me just tell you one thing. We have learned a lot in the last month. Whoa, it's been crazy. Madison Bernardin is my daughter and she's a certified master groomer. Uh, she's a professional dog handler, but now just recently, she's also our channel videographer and she's doing a great job every day we're learning. My son, Lex Van Dyke, he's currently in university right now and he's taking a degree in mathematics but his other part-time gig is he's our channel manager. Uh, he's also our co-editor. I do half of the editing. I know that's pretty shocking, right? <laughs> Nobody can ever believe that. So today, uh, this particular video, we're going to be bringing you some pretty um, serious stuff. And the reason I brought out my kids is because I honestly, I would not have been brave enough to actually bring this particular subject to you guys today without my kids. My kids, Really? Me and they really feel it was necessary and so um, I really want you guys to understand there's some sensitive subjects that are going to be talked about today I'm going to bring my kids both on and I'm going to introduce them to you and we're going to have a big chat about how to protect yourself hopefully Hey guys, I'm Lex. I'm the channel manager for Global Groomers TV, GGTV. Um, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> um, and I am really happy to be here sharing my experience with this issue in this video. Hi, my name is Madison Bernardin, a newly Canadian certified master groomer, as well one of Canada's top professional handlers. And recently, I've taken up videographing for Shauna Bernardin's Global Groomers, GGTV. This is the tale of a 2020 Valentine's Day. So on Valentine's uh, this year something crazy happened and it got me really thinking about uh, just these two being in the grooming shop alone and uh, you know just the bigger picture not just grooming but of actually just safety in the workplace because that often gets mis overlooked. Young groomers uh, will get new shops and uh, old groomers well, too. And <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we'll kind of omit the security measures that they need to take because it is often an issue. So. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So this story actually takes place about 30 years ago and, and I'm only 23. <laughs> so uh, originally, like how I even found out was in December, we got some really interesting text messages and uh, comments on our Global Groomers Bootcamp page. And uh, I alarmed Miss Shauna B about it, and uh, she kind of had a little bit of background story to why we got these suspicious comments and messages. Okay, so when Madison told me this story, I was I freaked the bleep out because um, <laughs> honestly, it's it's made me really think about like safety in the workplace for groomers. It's often overlooked, and uh, yeah, I kind of pushed you to do this one because. I don't know, it's scary, scary stuff. It's personal. It is not easy to put yourself out there and tell a story about what happened. My kids both inspired me for one single thing, for you guys, the viewers, is safety. Safety is number one. This scared the living shit out of us. It really happened. There's reports. It really, really did happen. So, and also, I just, I forgot to introduce my little dog, Brown. <laughs> this is actually my own dog, and he's, uh, he's, well, he's actually her dog, but he's my dog now, because he's like my therapy dog, so when I'm nervous, I'm always petting his ears, and so anyway, I just felt like I really had to have my family with me today to be able to bring this particular production to you. Thank you for tuning in with us. Uh, I'm going to come back with a major amount of serious stuff for you. This is of a sensitive nature, so be aware, but I'm bringing this only for safety warning for you guys so you can protect yourself. 
So what happened was 30 years ago, I had a roommate. I'm not gonna name him, but I had a roommate. I was very busy, I was a professional handler at the time and I was out of town most of the time. And I never at any point in time realized that she was in love with me. Like I honestly was legitimately completely oblivious to it. I know he even made our, our uh, the flower beds into chubby hearts and I totally just didn't even notice. Like, that's how bad I am. Wow. Anyway, fast forward a little bit. Uh, then I went on to open up Wags and Whiskers. I had my kids and stuff. and. I went out to go and open up the dog salon and then he started sending like really expensive gifts, which lots of you guys are like, wow, lucky you. It was not that yeah. awesome. It was actually very scary and intimidating. I still never did anything really about it because he wasn't too like scary, scary. And I was very busy. So I just kind of avoided the signs and the things that you need to pay attention to. So pay attention to this part. Like that was, that was dumb me. I really wasn't paying attention to anything at the time. So after a little while, he got kind of the message and he laid off. Now remember, I did know this person and he's also a schizophrenic and he's been on again, off again, his medications. What, to me, he's never actually been violent, but he does have violent tendencies, okay? So all of this, we know. I actually didn't hear anything from him at all, like for probably at least maybe about nine or 10 years, nothing specifically. And then a couple of times he started phoning my, my grooming salon line. And I know his voice because again, remember he was my roommate and I didn't say anything. I acted like he was a customer. I just sort of went with it, but then I proceeded and I blocked him. I blocked him off of my personal Facebook. I blocked him off of our Global Groomers page uh, under his name. It still persisted. Okay, so now let's fast forward to the last, I say, six or seven months. And this is where it gets like really ridiculous and crazy. So I have not seen this guy in like at least 25 years in Haman. Like personally, I've not seen him but he starts like seriously stalking our global groomers page specifically. And he goes under a fake name because now I've already blocked him personally from all of our pages, all of our social, social media. And now he's going under a name. No, I am comfortable about saying this. I'm not exposing him, but his fake name was Numbers Dale. Madison yeah, so is a huge person that is a big part of global movement. They both are, but like Madison does so much of the social media. So she actually is always on top of everything. And I had noticed a number of times this name, Numbers Dale. So we privately discussed it a few times, hey? Yeah. And I was like, keep your eye on this because these are weird pictures. It was a creepy thing. You know, we have like, 10,000 people on that page. I obviously don't know every single person. I want to believe everybody's good, but obviously this is not the true story. I had just this like crazy gut feeling the whole time though. And so then at that specific time, I shared with both my kids what had happened 30 years ago. And I said, honestly, my gut feeling is it's this guy. And at first they're kind of like, okay. Yeah, this is Whatever, mom. And then things got more serious. At Christmas time, I get this thing in the mail, and it's an airplane, and it's actually addressed to my nephew. I only have one niece and one nephew, and I like actually seriously. I'm gonna tell you right now, I shit my pants because that meant somebody was actually stalking my personal life, my family, my little baby nephew and my niece. I know my dog's here for me. <laughs> it really, uh, I felt like so horrible because it put my family at jeopardy. This was like the really the part that was so serious for me. He named my nephew on the package and he had my address. He knew every single thing. That's scary. So then, Let's fast forward to Valentine's this, this year. That was just a few days ago. Uh, he shows up at my shop, like in my actual shop. Now, I used to have a big, huge business in Calgary. We had 15 groomers, 60 dogs a day. Now, I live in the country. I have a private grooming salon. Daughter, we work together. This is a small establishment. Not You have to know us to know where we are. 
he walks into our shop at 10 o'clock in the morning on Valentine's Day. And I was in the middle of actually shooting an episode for GGTV when it happened. I looked up at him and I was like, you know you shouldn't be here. He knew, he dropped off some things, he gave us a letter, which is like crazy, I can barely even actually read it, but basically it says I've been in a drug-induced coma for the last 32 years. He was schizophrenic and has been on meds. He stopped taking his medication, so immediately I like actually freaked out because now I obviously know he's not on his medication. When he left, I like had a serious panic attack. I was just like actually freaking out. And Madison is like a pit bull. Like, just try to fuck with her mother, okay, seriously. And she, like, loses it. And at first, it was just, like, trying to get through, like, Valentine's Day at the grooming salon and shooting video. And then she's like, we are stopping everything right now. We are calling the police immediately. <laughs> That's exactly, actually, what we did. So on Valentine's Day, when uh, numbers came in to drop off the things, we were grooming little chubby heart Valentine's Day uh, baby. And all I can remember is that he walked in and I didn't know him, but I recognized him. And I really didn't know a whole lot about this story of them being roommates and et cetera. So he walked in and I immediately, my heart just like, I'm like, I know you, I've seen you at a dog show. And uh, I believe he was asking me about my giant schnauzer. He came up to me at a Red Deer dog show probably about a year ago. And I had my giant schnauzer on the table. And lots of people come to spectate at shows and, you know, visit your dogs and ask you questions about them. So it was just really weird because I never, he didn't seem like, he just seemed like a normal everyday guy. But apparently he was my mom's stalker. So when I heard about the story, um... I was freaked out, honestly. Like I got, I got shivers because it's just so planned and played out. Um, and it's just like it could be like your beagle client, you know? Like it could be anyone. I don't know. I don't honestly, know. you guys, he freaked out. Yeah. When he found out that anything was happening to his family, he freaked out. Yeah. He's being incredibly modest right now. But anyway, so. I launched a full investigation, of course. <laughs> 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 security, yeah, did, did some security detail, stuff like that. Um, but no, all in all, and then, you know what, honestly, it just made me think, and I'm like, this is so important, and it's not really out there, and I think, why not have a workplace safety? So long story short, I ended up calling the police on Valentine's Day, lucky me. <laughs> And the police came, they were excellent. They gave me so much good information. They were really actually blown away. They gave me shit, to be yes, honest. Yes, I, they did. <laughs> I should have been, and that's part of why I am doing this video, is that you guys should right. know the right recourse of what you should. I should have been documenting everything over those years. I could only go from what I could remember. I can't document any sort of day, uh, times or dates, so very important. Another thing, they were like, you should have actually been paying more attention to this on social media in December, okay? Because we were, oh, maybe it's him, maybe it's not. If you guys feel that you have that feeling that this is happening, you need to do with it. Seriously. This actually could have been so much more serious. I, I, I'm going to come back in the future and tell you another horrific story that happened in our lives for mm -hmm. safety only, but that's another story. This one just actually personally happened to our family in the last two weeks. My little fam jam and all of these guys. And they gave me the strength to come and tell you this story. There's a million different stalkers out there. We as a majority in the grooming industry are females. I'm not like, you know, and this could no happen. discriminating. To, and like this could happen to a guy. I'm not saying just it could Just as easily. Some crazy ladies out there. Uh, to end off this video, uh, when the police did actually confront my stalker, they told him basically one thing. Miss Bernardin has chosen to not have a restraining order put on you at this moment. However, 
you will make no contact with her on social media you will not contact her at work you will not contact her in any way shape or form you are not welcome on her property if by any chance you feel that you will break any of those you will be arrested immediately you have been told you've been warned now i have not heard one word which is yay awesome but I feel like this could happen to a million of you guys out there. Just to finish this video off, what we've decided is that from personal experience, we've researched it. We want to give you guys some safety tips just to keep you guys safe in the shop. So a couple tips about safety in your salon. First off, you're going to want a rechargeable panic button. Uh, ours is Mr. Pesky Brown here. And uh, another tip would be to get your rechargeable doorbells, which are the giant schnauzers, Katana and Tobias. Um, lastly, I would say taking a martial arts class, uh, just for basic, you know, Taekwondo or karate. Uh, there's a lot of self-defense classes. So my safety tips are a couple of things. Uh, listen to your gut i really if the really really i should have just listened to my gut my gut told me a long time ago this was happening number one this is information what the police gave us and i feel like this is really valid for you guys and pretty simple and inexpensive for you to do um, if you put into your window these premises are surveilled 24 hours percent of predators they don't want to get videotaped in this day and age Super easy. You can probably have that sign made for $25. Excellent choice. In home city, excellent choice. One other, this is a great tip, you guys. You can go to the dollar store and buy fake cameras for like $3. And a criminal cannot detect if that's real or not. They're trained to look for cameras. I'm not telling you, the police told me these things, okay? What he really, really stressed to me, though, was writing down the date. I'm sure, I hope that, like, if you guys are in and you're obviously here at the end of this, put down in the comments, like, please, we want to help you guys. Knock it in the comments. If you guys had experiences, share with us. Tell us. Tell us the story. Tell us how we can help you. We are sharing, like, for me, this was so personal. But now that we're doing this, tell us. We want to know more tricks that, not tricks, how to keep us safe. There's no trick. Let's stay alive and let's do this. This is real. Our this lives. And we are vulnerable. We have 10 to 30 people that we don't know coming into our facility every single day. We work in an industry that is 80% female. This really happened. Um, my biggest tip and why I wanted you to post this video really was just for awareness. I think it's a subject that often gets overlooked for groomers and yeah, but I am interested in hearing about stories you guys might have uh, or any tips, security tips. We're no experts by any means, but uh, we do what we can and just bringing it on the table. Uh, means something to us yeah make sure you subscribe to ggtv and like this video share it to all the groomers you know who might need to check out their safety detail thank you guys so much for tuning in i really hope nobody's too traumatized i really hope that you guys will are are willing to share your experiences with us we are happy to share this this is real it happened with us you know, at the beginning of this video, I was feeling like super emotional. Normally, I'm grooming a dog. I'm very confident in talking about grooming dogs. That's what I do. I'm a world champion dog groomer. I, one of the top certifiers in our country. I've certified 500 students in the last couple of years. I know my stuff. I am not into being stalked. I am not accustomed to having my family violated. That is very scary. That really happened to us. It's difficult for to put yourself out there because you don't know how people are going to perceive you and, and or be judged. Honestly, I don't care. If this helps one yeah. singer out there, one of you guys actually wants to stand there and listen to me and what we had to say, then we're helping one person protect themselves. That's all you can do. Thank you guys for your likes, shares, and subscribes. We are at almost a 1,000 subscribers in one month. Chubby heart.